This is awkward. Are you you're on your phone? I'm getting a picture for Tinder. Hello everyone. My name is Drew. This is my friend Trevor. Trevor. Trevor me and Trevor watched Godzilla vs. Kong last month. And uh, we had a pretty good time doing it, so we figured we'd watch the new one while drinking again. Um, yeah. Three, two, one, play. There we go. So, Trevor is a real trooper, and this is how you can tell he's a real friend. Uh, he woke up this morning at 4 o'clock for his shift at Whole Foods, sponsored by Jeff Bezos. Um, Thanks, Jeff. And... Uh, and he's now up, we're, we're past 11. It's 11.30, he's got to get up tomorrow morning for brunch, Easter brunch. We're shooting this the night before Easter. Yo, my boy JC is risen, let's be honest. He's talking about James Cordona. Is that, I don't know, uh, sorry. I don't know who James Cordona is. <laughs> I don't think that's a real guy. A young child says he witnessed his own father shoot and kill his mother. New details released in arrest documents for James Cordona. Can James Cordona be a part of every single video we make from now on? We're gonna make it. How has James been? I haven't seen Cordona in forever. We also saw this movie last night. Full disclosure. But we, me, Trevor, and I were in the same theater and not sitting next to each other. No, Drew's put me down next to two girls because he knows I'm single and alone. That was the way the universe had worked it out. And one tried to get me to summon a demon with her, Melissa. I want to summon a demon now. Let's do it. And then the other's trying to get me to go skydiving. Wow. They both want to kill me in their own unique ways. <laughs> in the last video, we, we were discussing Trevor's Tinder profile, and now we shouldn't be talking about more about the movie. That was one nope, of Nope, nope, it's all about my dating life. I'm alone. <laughs> I thought this was a pretty cool opening. I was like, why is he making a spear for this little kid? I, I was like a little worried for her, because <laughs> the way they were cutting it together seemed a little strange. I just thought he was gonna hunt something. I thought there was gonna be something for him to eat. That would have been cool. And I was like, oh, he's gonna immediately show him protecting the girl. I would say already a better opening than uh, Godzilla vs. Kong OG. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what the opening of that movie was. The opening was the newsreel <laughs> with the plums or tomatoes that were non-addictive. <laughs> oh, what the f*** is that? <laughs> It's supposed to be me. Is there a Build-A-Bear out here? <laughs> you didn't invite me to Build-A-Bear? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I can't hear this f***ing movie. I'll turn it up. We're gonna have to turn it up a tiny little bit. Turn it up. To the left. Take, Take it back, back now, y'all. One hop this time. One hop this time. Oh, we gotta, we gotta talk about the movie. That's right. <laughs> I, I love I, it. Her faces are great. Yeah, that expression. I remember in the very beginning, I was like, oh my God, someone who's like willing to show like expression. Modern acting is just, how dead and cold can I look while still be convincing? Also, why does he not appear in the rest of the movie? Because he was a major character, wasn't he? I don't think so. Wasn't he the one young uh, scientist from the original Kong Skull Island movie? Maybe. Is that not the same actor? Bro, I, I don't, my monster verse lore is not, is not up to date, oh, man. Oh God. I'm taking my shoes off camera, F you. You know what was weird? While this was going on, it, they, they only cut in scenes from the first movie for a little while, and I was like, what the f going, was this supposed to be a direct sequel to the first movie? Mm -hmm. Like maybe like, you know, this like got caught up in production hell for a little bit or whatever. Yeah, they are showing a lot of Muto action. Right. I appreciated the Mutos, really. Really interesting character design. Yeah. Character design, monster, monster design. Yeah, it's not too bad monster design. This was kind of a comical opening too, because it's sort Defeated? of- Defeated? I was thinking of- <laughs> This is kind of like- Did you ever see uh, the original Incredibles? Like, like- Oh yeah, dude, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. Defeated, dude, dude, defeated. I looked like a Smash tournament or something. Like, where's Game Godzilla & Watch? Godzilla yeah. <laughs> Godzilla versus Game & Watch. Hello, loyal listeners. Welcome to TTP, Titan Food Podcast, episode number 245. Today is the day. Maybe the last podcast I ever record. And look, I so this is Alex Jones. They're putting something in the water to make Godzilla gay. <laughs> this is very, if you know your Godzilla lore at all, which me and Trevor do, it's very clear where they were heading with this right off the fucking gun. I don't know about you. There's a whole cyber, there's one of two places you can go with cybernetics in, in the Godzilla verse. Are we spoiling it for the people watching it right now? You'll see, you'll see, you'll see. They're gonna give Godzilla a jetpack. Naquan hated this character. Did he tell you about that? No. Why? 
He said he was he was just comedic relief, and he didn't like him because of that. He wasn't like a strong. This man was like the driving force for half of the film. That was kind of my uh, that was my takeaway from it as well. I think I think he was a pretty strong character. Yeah, I would say that. But it's his only person to project onto it at the same time. Right? If, yeah. When you're there's a majority of characters who are gonna be white men. Yeah. I guess I have other characters to attach to, and if he's your singular. I mean, I don't know, you heard me in the theater, right? I was like, he's the most relatable character in this movie. Until the one Kiwi kid was like, I can't talk to girls. He's like, all right, I, I get this kid. I'm on board with this guy. <laughs> so so CGI, how do you, how are you, what did you think of, I, this, this part was okay. I, you know my opinion. I think it's all about the cinematography and the fact that we started off with this close shot, close up shot of Godzilla pissed me off because I need my wide shots. Yeah. I need my, in the distance, showing me depth of field, this large, massive figure coming to camera, and even though the camera's so far away, he takes up this entire frame, and just these ships are tiny little ants next to him. Yeah, That puts us right next to it. I have no idea, my frame of mind, I have no idea how big he is. I also liked how, wait, why is there one umbrella that's green? Did you see that? Why are they, why are they like eating food right outside of like a cybernetics compound? I want you to cut and go back, because there is a single, bright green umbrella that makes me think it was the one, like it, everything else was like color changed, like matted, <laughs> like they had a mask that made it red. This made me laugh when they brought CNN on. Because like the, the rest of the movie, you'll see, it just goes off the water. Mitch McConnell still... is filibustering <laughs> to have, <laughs> Godzilla, he's only attacking the democratic states. Well, Democrats in the Senate will have you believe that, well, one percent. Uh... Of the 1% are being attacked by Godzilla. We need to make sure everybody's being attacked by Godzilla. What kind of teacher just puts on CNN in the middle of a class? That's what I was thinking when this happened. Why, Why are they watching, the watching news? CNN? Right? It's very strange. What would be a class like that? Oh, I don't know. A class that doesn't Humanities matter. or Welcome some shit. Welcome to humanities. We're covering <laughs> modern events. And they just watch CNN all day? He reappears and just so happens to destroy that specific facility. That shot looked amazing. Did you see that? Uh, like, well, we'll cut back to it. The depth of field on that shot, where well, they follow her. It's from a low angle where she's looking at her phone. Everything else is out of frame. It's because she's focused on her phone. There are some shots that you really enjoyed. And like, there were some shots in this movie that just look incredible. Yeah. Something weird about it. This, this was so shoehorned in. Ugh. Part of me wants them to lean into characters that have been established in the world, mm -hmm. right? And it's difficult for them to do that because they want to tell different stories at the same time. Well, listen, they introduce maybe three or four new characters in this movie that have actual importance. Are you going someplace? Oh, you're sitting back down, okay. Uh, the conspiracy theorists, they introduce the girl who's been in charge of Kong, the little girl who has a relationship with Kong, and they introduce the villain. I didn't mean to cut you off. No. It's not like my feelings are hurt. It's not like our relationship is strained enough as it is, and now I'm feeling that maybe there's no road to recovery. I feel like my relationship is strained with everyone. Not just you, all of you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Most of the people watching this probably don't even know who I am. I don't even know who I am. <laughs> when, well, well, we'll get to that. When they when they do the thing with the guy's beard, it, it's an interesting transition. Like when a character goes from inactivity to activity, right. there's usually a facial feature change. Like shaving up makes sense. That's like it's go time. Da -da -da -da. Oh, Should I shave for this? Should I like run up and shave real? That quick? That would be fucking hilarious. Bye. All right, wait. I gotta pause it. No, though. keep the movie going. Capture the audio. I gotta carry this on my Capture own. Capture the audio. Oh my god. All right, guys, we're now in my bathroom. Oh my god. <sighs> We're shaving real quick. First off, all right, I love that they're in Philadelphia for this scene. Like all the crackpot scientists are in Philadelphia for some reason. Uh, I'm using a straight razor if that matters to anyone. It's not that right, it's all bitch. This movie leans heavily into conspiracy theories. And it's, it's kind of strange because it's like, they almost want you to believe it. I wonder how long he's gonna be done. This will take me like five minutes. I'm sorry, Drew. Oh, the water's so cold. It like makes the world like an insane place. Otherwise, the screenwriters are just like super de duper conspiracy heavy. And no, oh. <laughs> I'm doing such a shitty job because they actually are conspiracy theorists, which would be terrifying. We can't pause the video and wait for Trevor to shave either, because it would desync everything. You're stuck with me. 
What do you want to talk about? The whole planet's worth of gravity reversed in a split second. Okay, but if a whole planet's worth of gravity reversed in a switch split second, wouldn't everyone on planet Earth then fly away? All right, now I'm switching to uh, <laughs> Gillette, uh, the best a man can get. Oh, that's a pretty bad cut. My bad. It almost like it makes you wonder why they're even leaning into Hollow Earth so much. Like, it, maybe it makes sense for, like, Godzilla, but, like, this is some journey of the center of the Earth bullshit. I give you the center. The scene was actually fairly boring in the movie, so I'm kind of glad I'm missing it. Uh, Trevor's talking the, up there. Uh, the main antagonist. Oh, I just don't enjoy his acting. You can't only push a, a character so far before. It just seems inauthentic. The Kong Whisperer! <laughs> Those drawings are terrible. I don't care if a kid did them, they're trash. Oof. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to save this. I liked that they introduced um, a deaf person. Take a picture for prosperity sake. Oh, I don't have my phone. This is the same guy from the previous scene in Philadelphia that had like the long beard. Now what's weird is that he has a beard one scene and in the very next scene he doesn't have a beard. It's hard for me to even tell who this f***ing guy is. Now that shows that there's a good character transformation, but it also confuses your audience if you don't show the scene where he's like shaving his face and maybe cleaning himself up a little bit, right? It takes a long time for Trevor to shave. In this whole movie I would wager that she is the best actor. Not the kid. I don't know her name. I think she's a very good actor. Poor Drew has to do all this work. So this this whole scene is sorta stripped from Godzilla vs. Kong, the OG movie. Try so hard, you guys. Listen, if you enjoyed the sound of me shaving and talking in my bathroom alone for the last five minutes, Trevor's been gone uh, for please so like, long. comment, and subscribe. I miss him. Do you guys miss Trevor? Let me know in the comment section. What the fuck? I'm, I'm back. back. He's back. You missed the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, but he's shaved now. He is. And I talked to the mic the whole time, so you can have some audio throw in Son later. Son of a bitch. I hope you're not like trash talking me or something. Oh yeah, absolutely. I was like, yo, this guy's a tenant. That's, a oh shit. There are no friends at dawn. It, it's a dusk world. The world's at dusk. Everything I said about him upstairs, I take it all back. Rushing with a straight razor. <laughs> I was worried you were gonna like. I thought like for the joke you were gonna come back with cuts all over your face. I was gonna be I, like, I do got some bad cuts on my neck. That's really funny, but like, don't cut yourself, Trevor. Am I the same character who was sitting here moments ago, or am I someone new? Right. You don't know. It's fucking weird. We should have shown him in the bathroom shaving himself. This movie kind of its strength is how quickly it moves along. If you stick to any like single thing that happens in this movie, you quickly break it down. It's like this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't really work as a concept, but they're moving so quickly that you're willing to ignore it just to follow the pace of the film. And that's its strength. I went right before we started this because we had a whole D&D &D campaign before this. Oh God, what a crazy campaign that was. Let us know in the comments section if you want D&D &D content. <laughs> Good tempt me with that shit. This could just become a nerd channel if you guys like that stuff. If you want the channel to be a nerd channel, write fan fiction about me and Drew. Like, comment, and subscribe. Only gay, only gay stuff. Only straight stuff. <laughs> You're bleeding! <laughs> You're bleeding! I told you, bro! Oh, Listen, straight razor, completely dry skin. You did it dry? What are you nuts? I don't know, Jack, about shaving. Could you tell? I should have said more shit up there, but I was honestly listening to you down here. It's like, I wonder what he's talking about. I can't wait to watch on whatever this move. It gets released and find out what Drew talked about. It's gonna take me so long to edit this. So this is where we find out that she not only is deaf, but she has superpowers. She can hear heartbeats. You know what they never address later on, and this might be a spoiler. Did you notice when they were in the beep, 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 uh, I was just like trying to it censor out. myself. Beep. I can bleep it, just say Oh it. really? Yeah, just, just cover your mouth. And <laughs> um, when they were in the hollow <laughs> earth, uh, there was a statue of Kong. It's and, gonna be so confusing! And the statue of Kong was doing the same finger thing. Do you remember that? Am I missing? Oh my god, there's still some mustache here. 
No, I don't. Look at me. I don't see it. You're good. All right. I have some mustache still over here too. Should I go upstairs and shave? <laughs> <laughs> Bro! <laughs> Shave your chest though and then come back. I can do that. No, no don't. Well, I'm not gonna show that. <laughs> you don't wanna see it. It's all hairy. I like, comment, subscribe if you want Drew to show his stomach. Oh, fuck. We, we're not talking about the movie anymore. I feel like we're funnier when we don't talk about the movie though. Yeah, but the one critique I got was talk about the movie, so. I know, we gotta talk about it. He can speak sign! Remember when we were testing the audio max and you were like, how loud are we gonna be? As way you were louder. Like, I'm the loudest I'm gonna be right now. <laughs> 10 seconds later, sign language! <laughs> There's a whole B plot going on with the characters from the previous movie. I feel like the, the, the characters from the previous movie should be the A plot. I want there to be like, I want there to be some consistency between movies almost. Yeah. Ooh, I like this synth wave, like 80s, like, ooh. Do, 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 I think the van is pretty cool. It's got a mystery machine vibe to it. Yeah. I like the, this kid they introduced. Um, they kind of do him no justice in this movie, but he's got that Kiwi accent, which is just ah, to the ears. I don't know what a Kiwi accent is. I think a Kiwi is a fruit. I don't know if fruits can talk. Kiwi's actually a small flightless bird. Oh, okay. I'm gonna be really upset if I find out that his accent isn't actually like a Kiwi accent and it's like something else and I'm just like misidentifying it. That's a microaggression. That would be a microaggression, and I will call you out on it in post-production. What's really gonna happen is if I find out that you're mistaken, I'll cut out every reference to it. Just cut me. Drew, you're gonna have to black the out me the entire movie. Like have the, just do a poop. I thought a kiwi was a fruit. That's gonna be the only <laughs> And then there's nobody it. sitting here. <laughs> Who was the Russian guy who like got rid of people from his, like his photographs? Like, oh, uh, he was. Oh, Stalin. <laughs> I think a kiwi is a fruit. I don't know if fruits can talk. Kiwi's actually... Oh, okay. There's gonna be an <laughs> empty chair here the entire movie. This scene I felt like was longer in theaters, so that kind of snapped by real quick. But we're also talking about Stalin, so... I mean, also the second time you see something, it's gonna go by quicker. It is kind of... It's flying by. No, I'm telling you, this movie was quick. I'm, t I'm gonna keep talking about it. The pace of this film is one of the driving reasons I think it's a good film. I give it a B. B is okay. I think that's an adequate rating. B, I think, like, I think if average. every Godzilla film got a B, then we'd be chilling. That's fine. That's all they need. Oh, the lighting in this, man. I love it when... They, okay, it looks like shit on him, but he's not an important character in this scene. The two important characters are him. Well, here's the thing. Um, this is a fun article I read a long time ago about uh, actually uh, setting up lighting in films specifically for African-Americans or people with darker skin. Uh -huh. And some of the techniques I remember reading about are being applied in this film. And it has to do with like um, uh, using certain colored lights. Neon colors. And, and actually like using specific cameras. I see a lot of movies like we did Silence of the Lambs a couple, month, a couple weeks ago. And the lighting on that guy's face was abysmal. And I like, I pointed it out to Naquan and I said, they had no idea how to light black people, and it was really kind of sad. It, it's also a technical issue as well. Well, yeah. And the, here's the thing. It's a complexion you're, thing. Exactly. It, there's a there's an actual technical difficulty when coming with it. Like, if you're especially lighting a scene using the same lights for a white person versus a black person, this film, our conversation got really, like, in a different direction, but I yeah. enjoy it. I'm yeah. enjoying this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, this is really good lighting. <laughs> the more that I look at it, the more I'm like, this... And they, they motivate it really well too. There's no lights inside the fucking place. The like the white fluorescence. It's all just the neon. That's so good. You know what? They there is a lot of color in this movie, which I think a lot of modern films stay away from for some reason. It's all a lot of grays and browns and yellows. But this film is so colorful. And once you see the Hong Kong fight later, it's just gorgeous to look at. Spoiler alert. You, China. We have some comments to make later. Get ready for that. Get ready, baby. If you also hate China, like, comment, and subscribe. China's bad. China, China bad. bad. <laughs> like. China not bad. Subscribe. Still like. <laughs> yeah. Subscribe. See, that's the shot we should have had when he earlier like, on. Who was the brother? Did you see it? Was it Tom Hiddleston? It was not. It was absolutely not. It was someone who was not interested. But again, it's just, it, the movie moves so quick that you get past everything. You're right. You're absolutely right, Trevor. It goes so fast. You just I'm get past right. all the trash about I'm this. I'm right. I made a promise then and there to protect her. And I did. 
think that in some way he did the same. Do you think he would take directions from her? What a dickhead. Immediately. The man is on a mission to save the world in his mind. He is willing to forego any formality, any notion of humanity to achieve peace. I mean, it's, he's relatable. And then there's like comically bad villains in this too, like the daughter. She made some fucking stupid, am I allowed to curse? She made some fucking stupid decisions. It. Who cares, yeah, that's fine. They said it was gonna be 17 minutes when I read about it, but like- We can time it, you wanna time it? Throw a goddamn timer up, Drew. I want a timer right here. Ooh, then, I'll do like a Mortal Kombat. He would have no chance out here. This is not gonna, first off, this is not gonna get through the YouTube algorithm. Again, we're introduced with a close up of Godzilla. What the f it's probably Why? a lot easier to, to- It's cheaper. Yeah. Just can put a man in a suit again. There's a shot in here that looks so fake that it pisses me off. This also isn't how ships work, by the way. I don't, I don't think. I feel like the windows would break from the pressure of the water. So we get a nice glimpse into this guy's character. He's not completely evil. He wants to release Khan to give him a chance, which is cool. They actually made Godzilla a believable villain in this movie. Villains don't have to be evil, they just have to have like good motivation. Yeah. It's probably the most blood they could show for China. I, I, I'm so cynical about big budget movies these days, it's really sad. Listen, there are people torrenting these movies, making review videos online on YouTube, just copying the footage. I know last time there was a helicopter shot, we were like, oh, could they actually lift it? Yeah. Could a ship support Kong's weight? F it's gonna be so much harder to do. Did you notice there was a lot of shots in this movie that reminded me of like one of those 3D roller coaster rides where like it's like you're part of the ride, the yes. action? Yes. There's a few shots like that in this movie. I don't know what the timer is right now for how long this fight's been going on, but it, it'll tell me right above me. I forgot about the timer. I, I don't the forget. Timer editor, editor Drew, you're gonna do that and you're gonna hate your life, but that's okay. This is the shot, ladies and gentlemen. This is modern cinema. <laughs> it's like a Jason Bourne movie for fucking King Jesus Christ, it's King Kong. God, that alcohol is hitting me hard right now. Let's go, baby! <laughs> <laughs> to throw in an actual, honest to God, good narrative in this film, a little, uh, probably a lot harder. I would, it yeah, would seem maybe so right. out of place because, uh, like you said, this film relies on spectacle. Right. That's the shot that I'm looks like shit. Look at this shot. Oh. Oh God, it looks so bad. What that? Look at that! You don't like that? Bro, it looks sh like straight out of a cartoon. This might set me over the limit, but that's all right. I Listen, can limits are meant to be broken. Do you like that sound effect right there, guys? Let's listen one more time. I just hit myself in the face. Fucking hurt, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why are you apologizing? I don't know. I feel bad. I, I'm making this f***er stay up drunk late at night to watch Godzilla vs. Kong, which isn't even that good of a movie. It's all right. I mean, it's not great. It's, this it, is what I look forward to, friend. This motherfucker's got to wake up at Buddy, four in the morning. I love you, all right? I love you too. I do shit for you. Oh. See, this is, this is very interesting because it goes from realistic, right? to this weird neon shit. This is almost exactly where the movie changes to where it starts getting a little more fantastical, right? It's like they show it exactly with the new weird neon purple lights. That's The lighting cool. choice is very weird. It's not weird, it's I feel like- a, It's supposed to be a military compound. But I feel like it's like, it's very intentional where like, this is where it starts getting more fantastical. I Let's wonder if the, the lighting, lighting motivates that? I think it like, might. Is it supposed to be like, once you see it, like a lighting, you're like, you're willing to accept it? Because that, that could totally have been a decision someone made, or it could have 
an all coincidence yeah. and they didn't even try. I was discussing this in theaters too, perhaps maybe too loudly, John. Shout out, John. <laughs> John <laughs> Sims. He asked if like, if this fantastical shit started happening in any of the previous, was it alluded to in any of the previous movies? The first one is very gritty, very realistic. So it started getting a little more ridiculous in the second one, still grounded in reality. That scene right there in the third one, that's where reality breaks, and that's where they say, this shit is getting completely fantastical. And they just change the lighting instantly. There's emotional beats, right? They're not for, they're not for like human characters, they're for Kong. Which is like, it's insane to even think about, but they nail it. Like this is such a good emotional moment for Kong. He is our main character. He's our main character, you're absolutely right. He's based off of a silverback gorilla. And they're genetically fairly similar to us. We have a lot of connections with them as a species. And I wonder if it's because of that we're able to connect with them so well. But Maybe. could they do this with Godzilla? Could we get this emotionally attached to Godzilla, a lizard, a reptile? I think there's, there's a lot to say for what they do with Godzilla in this movie too, though. I think like... There's moments where I like really connect with them. I'm like, I understand what he's doing here. Just from like what they're doing with his body and like how he's nodding and like the, what he's doing with his eyes and shit like that. There's no way back oh, Look how so sad. sad he looks. <laughs> they should give him a giant like kitten to play with. Cause you know how they gave the gorillas the kittens? <laughs> yeah. He just has like a giant like big cat, like <laughs> Bengal Clifford. tiger. It's Clifford. It's Clifford. Clifford. Yo, Clifford's the next kaiju. Let's go. Clifford should definitely be a kaiju. It's sad, right? And he goes straight down. They like straight up lied to the man. That's why I wanted that to pay off more. I don't know. Return to monkey. They simultaneously want you to care for Kong, but also don't give a f that they just lied to Kong, right? Oh, it's we care, we care. I mean, we care, but like it never pays off. All right, let's talk about the CGI choice for the design of these heaves, which I was very fixated on the name of that when I saw it in theaters. What are they called? Heave? A heave. Heave ho, heave ho, <laughs> to hollow he earth we go. I like how they don't explain any of it, because as soon as they try to explain any of, any of the pseudoscience bullshit, will f***ing lose it. Like, <laughs> nobody will be on board. I wonder if, like, the screenwriters are actually crazy conspiracy theories <laughs> that they know so much about all these conspiracy theories. Or they if they're- They throw in a lot of weird information in this movie, trying to get the word out, like, fluoride makes you complacent. What the hell is a portal to the set? Like, that doesn't make any sense. That's very They dumb. cross the rainbow bridge to get to the What is theater. this? Yeah, no, okay, they become like an atom. That's not how, like, even in Hollow Earth theory, not that I know much about this pseudoscience bullshit, but there's no portals. It's not f***ing Valve out here. Other than, what was that weird close-up of that random guy we've never seen before? Did you see that? I don't see anything anymore. That's fair. I did like this part of the movie. This whole Hollow Earth part is actually very interesting, especially not getting there, but exploring it. I just think... The world building in here is pretty good. There's a lot of show don't tell, which is yeah. one of the highlights of filmmaking. Yeah. Where, and again, it moves very quickly. So you're allowed to make your own assumptions. So what they do is by not explaining everything that happens, you're allowed to fill in the blanks with what makes sense to you. So yes. everybody has their own idea of what's going on. And that way it becomes believable to you because you're the one who came up with the answers. Oh God, I'm drunk. Are you, how are you doing? You're sober, aren't you? That's all right. Some strange radar, Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> <laughs> but if you think about it right now, we're like completely out of the realm of possibility, but we're still along for the ride, which means it's doing an okay job at doing what it does. What do you mean outside the realm of possibility? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, was, this is a moment of world building that I think that I would like to point out. Well, you, sh you see, the, you know, you see something human in him. You see this curiosity and his experimentation. Okay, this and is then, what I was talking about earlier. They're doing the same hand gesture the little girl did. Look, look, yeah. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're There's some about. shit here that I really want some answers to, and I'm honest to God curious. I wonder if we'll get answers. I, I, I hope they continue on with this, because it's just enjoyable enough that I don't hate it. Here's the other. Oh, then they cut back to this shit. Oh, this is the most ridiculous shit I've ever seen in my life. I'm noticing it even more now that I'm paying attention to it. 
Like they really are doing a good job keeping it moving because they could linger on shots, but they're cutting everything a little too quickly. Not too quickly, perfectly. To, like again, if it were a good movie, like a, like a, not a good movie is not the right word, but you mean like a, a, mo a movie that's more focused on story than spectacle, then they would spend more time with these characters. Because they would have emotional beats, but they're not. They're just trying to get to the next sex piece to show you the next cool thing. The next thing. spectacle. <laughs> we have not been paying much attention to the movie. Watch it. <laughs> Yeah, I've been watching all of it, especially when Trevor I'm busy was shaving. And shaving. That was not planned. <laughs> he just went off and shaved. So this is where we get the uh, the introduction to. Uh, should we say it? Is now the time to say it? Trump 2024. <laughs> Don't frighten me like that. <laughs> Don't frighten. Me. There he is, Mecha Godzilla. You cut out the opening to Mecha Godzilla because we're talking about like the the, the right wing like oh, revolution. Gosh. All right, let's talk about the design of Mechagodzilla, how they modernized it and made it seem believable. Would you believe this design could actually function as an actual, uh, what, what would you call this, a robot? Yes. I like how they actually added color to the skull. I think they were called skull crawlers. Because in the original movie, they were just drab, like black and white. This one has reds and yellows. It's weird when they decide to throw shit on the lens of the fake camera. Do you agree with that? Was there some recently with the... Yeah, the, they, like when the skull crawler, it, it was like... Oh, oh, okay. Through like saliva. You know how you're talking about how he had an orgasmic expression earlier? Yes. That looked a little... That looked like he was having some good times. I assumed that that was going to be that he was going to be seduced by the power of Mecha Godzilla, And he was going to... Is he drinking Scott? Hey, cheers, motherfucker. That's awesome. I like that guy. It's like they're alluding to things that don't actually happen. I feel like within the filming of this movie, they tried a thousand different things. Like, oh, let's just film this because maybe it'll work. I honestly want to see who the editor was because whoever edited this movie, I bet saved it. I bet it looked like absolute garbage when they were just going through like dailies and someone put together a fairly decent movie. I, w I was not expecting him to be the character he was, but he's doing such a good job. Wow. The CGI artists are doing. God, look how massive that place is. In order for an ape to evolve in the center of the earth, there'd have to be trees that are large enough for, for an ape to develop in the center of the earth. Listen, don't fucking explain to me that you fully comprehend how evolution <laughs> works. Evolution is not a single river. It is a multifaceted valley of interconnecting rivers it is what? such a complicated phenomena I don't that we have like barely is, begun though. to understand it. Dr I feel like I feel like I feel like evolution is just cause and effect. It's just entropy no, enhanced, it's... right? Right? No, no, no. Think about it. Think about it. When water hits a rock, what happens? Erosion. Twenty minutes later. We missed that whole I scene. Know, we I know. You didn't watch the, one of the most important scenes of the movie because True had to challenge me on. Evolution. Darwin says hello, oh, bitch. Oh god, that's the most that's the most ridiculous scene of the whole movie, too. <laughs> we just glossed right past it. Alright, this is a cool part of the movie. We should actually talk about it. Maybe. Uh this is King Ghidorah's skull. Uh and if you watched the previous movie. Oh god! I don't Here's the thing, it. they were discussing how uh Ghidorah's was able to have psych like psionic abilities to communicate between the brains in his head. But here's the thing. They're talking about tapping into the power of the psionic abilities, but there isn't any brain matter left. In fact, it's entirely skull. <laughs> these movies- Godzilla's angry again. H historically speaking, these movies perform better in China than they do in the United States. And what happens? They destroy Hong Kong. So China, the Chinese audience is appeased. Hong Kong revolution the Chinese time. government is appeased and they'll show this to all of their citizens because China is like that. Also, I don't think there's a city, maybe Sichuan. Sh uh, what about Shanghai? Are you, are you talking is about- Is Shanghai that big though? Shanghai's pretty big, yeah. It's like the capital of China, is it not? <sighs> Here we go. That's some information I would like to have. What's the capital of China? It's, it's, oh God. It's what? capital. Beijing! Okay. It's weird. There's a carved Godzilla in this. And the, what is it? We're what are skipping they over probably the most interesting part of the movie. I know, because again. Because we've reached max But this part of, this part of the, the movie doesn't 
fucking matter. It's just, it's just flavor to get us to the Kong, the Kong Kong fight. How powerful is Godzilla's radioactive breath? that it can drill to the center of the earth, because as we'll see, that's what he does. Its strength is fluctuating, and that's a little inconsistency that annoys me, personally. My personal theory about what's going on here is that the, the, the caverns that were carved, the, the tunnels of the hollow earth, oh. <laughs> the tunnels that were carved in the hollow earth were from Godzilla. He was carving the, he was carving the things as he was going, you know what I mean? Oh, one thing we glossed over that almost made me walk out of the movie theater was like, <laughs> if he sits in that f***ing chair and it's a throne, I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. And it absolutely happened. It's weird that an ape inherits a throne of, of Kongs. <laughs> I should have drank something stronger. I can't, my stomach's not big enough to hold like all this liquid. I'm not also hydrated enough. I might die tomorrow. If I die tomorrow, please have like, the entirety of this be in the movie, like in the video. You, I'll, you gotta text me tomorrow and tell me what's up on Easter, okay? I'm dead. <laughs> me and JC have a, we have a score to settle. James Cardona is behind bars in the Bear County Jail. What did you think about this creature? It was almost like a condor. It seems to me like Baby Rodan, and that's what I thought <gasps> was going on. It kinda, really? It kind of looks like Baby Rodan. Beaks right? are completely different. Um, a little bit, yeah. What, what is established before? I like how everything gets destroyed so they don't have to explain it later. That's a very good point. Okay, can we talk about this lock? <laughs> Door the disabled. Worst, the worst lock in the history of locks. Only geniuses know the correct cadence of one, two, my, three. Uh, Secret cave. Uh, <laughs> let's get a genius guy down here. Genius bar. Output. Genius bar guy. <laughs> One, two, three. All right, sounds good. All right, good. we're gonna need to hard reset the lockdown procedure. It's time to pee. We're gonna put this in the video too. I'm gonna go pee with him. I'm gonna be right back. Come on in here. There's gonna be no one on camera for a few minutes while we sword fight. He is though. missing the toilet. <laughs> He's missing the toilet I'm so bad. I'm hitting all the toilet. Don't lie about me. How dare the man you? can't pee straight. The coolest fight in the movie is happening, and we're in the bathroom. <laughs> All right, I gotta carry the video now. This seemed like so much longer in theaters, did it not? Well, we're also not paying attention and <laughs> drunk. The close-ups in this fight looked really good, though. And this is what we're talking about lighting. Look how they're just like uh, throwing in all these different colors, and you actually see like. Oh my god, did you see that moment of light that just passed underneath him and then there was that strong silhouette? The animators in this did such an amazing job. And oh, this is the f theme yep, park ride. Yep, here it is. Whoa, these 4D seats are incredible. That might be the way movie theaters go though, like add like a little extra. I mean, the AMC by us has 4D seats. Remember when we saw 1924? There'd be a Pepsi commercial before the movie began and it would shake our sheet, our, our seats and rock us. It was like Pepsi, the, the thirst at the movie theaters. <laughs> Drew, I know you're gonna look this up later and this is a direct reference to the last video, but how tall are the buildings in Hong Kong and how tall are King Kong and Godzilla and are they, is this accurate King Kong is 895 feet tall. And if I'm wrong, I want to see by the margin. We missed sure. the whole scene again, Fuck! I did it on purpose. I don't want to watch I this movie. I did it on purpose. This video is going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> I really enjoyed this fight in cinema. Uh, in cinema. In, at, I'm like British, like at university. At university. I was snorting cocaine with bisexual Germans. Why is this even such a big deal? It's just a giant <laughs> monkey fighting a giant lizard. That's literally all I live for. All right. I was born. I watch monkey fight lizard. I die. All this, right. This is the scene I'm talking about where you understand Godzilla's motivation. Again, look at the lighting with the red and green. This looks really good. Nice that Godzilla's like, he, that was like a, okay. He knows it was like a, the, the, the finishing throat, like the last roar of like something that is broken. I always assumed King Kong would always get his ass kicked. But this movie truly believed like, oh my God, he had a chance. What's weird is that I love Godzilla. I'm a huge Godzilla guy. I wanted Godzilla to win this. At this point in the movie, I'm like, ah, uh, Kong, get up. Oh, wait. 
Wait, 119 meters in feet? <laughs> <laughs> I was so f***ing wrong with how tall he was, guys. So Eleven from Stranger Things broke into a super secret facility and was like, Mecha guys a little bad. But why? Why does she think that? Maybe because they're using an alien brain to f***ing control it. And maybe that have unforeseen consequences. <gasps> Example number one. <laughs> I've been figuring this out in therapy and I repress a lot of things. <laughs> I have a bad memory because I choose to have a bad memory. So I like Mecha Godzilla. I really do. When you start seeing this, it looks pretty cool. Especially when it's in daylight. We'll compare original Mecha Godzilla to this Mecha Godzilla, but Mecha this Mecha Godzilla the original looks one better. was too sleek, too many hard lines. You knew exactly what I was exactly. going to say. Exactly. Very rigid. It's, the design. it's funny because it's complicated, but its silhouette is so recognizable that I don't have a problem connecting with it. Like, it's like I never am unaware of what's going on, what kind of action it's taking. Well, the thing about Mechagodzilla 2 was that he wasn't a villain in the original movies. He was kind of like the Tokyo response to Godzilla. I love this. That is the coolest fing shit. Are you kidding me? Get out of here if that doesn't fing get you. I was gonna say something inappropriate, but like, <laughs> if that rocked your jammies, like, comment, and subscribe. All right, 12 year old, hack the computer of the most advanced cyber corporation on the planet. Straight out of Jurassic Park. It's a human system. I know this. It's how the files of the whole park. It tells you everything. Um, I gotta find the right file. <laughs> Where she hacks the door. Oh my god, right. you're totally- This is the shot, this is the shot we were talking about. This was a great shot, oh my god, so cool. I'm an asshole, so I am a critic. So I love to shit on things, but I'm enjoying this. The more I look at her hair, dude, the more I'm like, what the fuck is going on there, right? Her haircut? The little it's, kid? It doesn't look attached on the sides, it just looks like a weird unibrow across her forehead. I thought he was- Dad? I'm about to die because I didn't listen to you. He's in two fucking scenes in this whole movie. He just got hit like in the chest and you saw like it like kind of uh, illuminate his chest where he was like, Arr! you know what I mean? It's like, oh, Look shit. at this wide shot. It looks so good. God damn it. They better do Mothra some justice now because this is just like completely out of, this is like straight up Mothra. This is what Mothra is essentially. What, the two like spirit guardian yes, girls? Yes, and they like, they're, they're, they can talk to her and it like, they, they understand her. This is just, they just projected Mothra onto King Kong. HTML course at summer camp. HTML. Yes, at summer camp. With HTML. I took an HTML class in college, and let me tell you, I would not be trying to jump onto this. All right, so you want me to create a web page with an image how big? <laughs> and you want borders on the side? Slow down. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put a YouTube link in this. <laughs> the honest to God, I was cheering in the theaters when this was happening. Uh, what a great protagonist. Finish him. I like this shot a lot. I remember really liking this. Cause there's and the <laughs> helicopter. <laughs> no reason. What? Time to get the f out of here right when everything is over. Wait, get ready for the best line of the movie. Shut up, Josh. Look what could go. I like how he looks terrified too, and he looks damaged. Oh God. Good, good, good shit. It looks good. It looks good. Can you add the fucking, uh, what's that drip, right? Driving movie that we always make fun of? Fast and Furious. Can we, it's like, you'll always be my brother. Do, 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 it's been a do, long Yeah. I don't have friends. I got family. This is the one scene where there seems like there's vines long enough for Kong to swing on. <laughs> All right, well, that's it, everybody. Uh, sorry it wasn't as fun as the last one. Uh, I had a good time. No, I'm, I'm saying for them. I mean, I had a good time. 
It seems like we talked way too much about the movie and didn't have enough of a good time. What do you think about that? Trevor, let me know in the comment section below. I shaved for this. <laughs> you want more of me and Trevor being funny on camera? We could do a whole Godzilla series. If you guys want a Godzilla series, say the word clock in the in the bot in the comment section. I just saw a clock on the wall over there. It's a pretty cool clock. Let me um and then uh stay safe and healthy and so hopefully I'll see you next week. Okay, enough. Video done!